Hey guys, welcome back. Today we are talking about the third part of our designing for screen printing series, which is making your own Illustrator brushes. Um, you can do this from sketches. We're gonna start out, we're gonna do um, some lines, some various textures, um, elements that'll build to your drawing. So if you have grass in your drawing, do some hatching that looks like grass and you can build this up to create a texture later. Um, and we'll go ahead and start with that now. You also want to create some shading elements, so some some things that'll help you to build up some layers of shading later once you add some colors into this illustration. So it's a good idea to try to make some gradients if you're using charcoal or um, watercolor, whatever you might be using to make these textures. Um, just go ahead and do that as well. After you've created these textures, you want to scan these in at a uh, high resolution. I normally go with around 600 dpi, just so I make sure to capture as much detail as possible. It's The detail is going to get scaled down when we bring these over to Illustrator, but it's always better to have more and scale down. It just looks better than when you start with less detail. Once you have those scans on your desktop, we're going to pull these over into Illustrator. Uh, take that back. We're gonna pull these into Photoshop first. So let's go ahead and hop onto the computer. All right, I have my file up here in the desktop already, so I'm gonna pull this into Photoshop. And I have a variety of textures on this page. I got some grass, some leaves, some shading stuff, and some lines. Um, some little hatches for maybe some of the fur of the dog in my illustration, um, some bark for some trees, just some different elements. So I'm going to go ahead and capture one of these lines. This is going to be an element that is used throughout some outlines on different elements. So you need to unlock this background layer, just turn it into its own layer. You can do that through double clicking, just hitting enter. We're going to copy this line and we're going to go into Illustrator. I already set up my document, the size that it will be eventually. Um, it's a good idea to go ahead and set that up. And then I'm going to paste it right in. And for this brush, I'm going to go ahead, and grab the move tool and rotate this. And you can see it's not quite straight here. So to make this straight, I'm going to use an effect. I'm just going to go over and select warp and arc. And this is gonna kind of straighten it out for me. You may have to adjust the percentage. Um, you can do some distortion if if you need to, to, to really refine this. Um, I think it's looking pretty good as is at this point. Um, there's always a little bit of tweaking you can do, but I think this is pretty good shape. So we're just gonna click okay and then you're going to come over to image trace. If it's not, this panel isn't already open. You can go up to your window palette and find it up there. 
you're gonna click preview and this looks pretty good um, you want to open your advanced tab and check out how many paths you have um, and how how many anchor points this is important because it can cause some lag if you're not working with a lot of memory um, so I'm gonna pull down the paths and see how much difference it makes it's not it's not messing up my stroke too much, so I think I'm good with that. Um, and we also want to click ignore white, because we don't want the white in this path. We don't need it. Um, once you're done there, you can go up to object, expand appearance, and there we have it. We have a vector version of our path here. Um, I'm going to straighten this out. You can pull up your rulers and drag a guide if you want. I don't need this to be completely straight, but I want it to be as close as possible. So grab this and then also hit command eight just to double check you can see the bounding box there and then we'll drag this over to our brushes palette you'll get a, a dialogue here that asks whether you want to make it a scatter brush art brush or pattern brush we're gonna do an art brush click OK and then you see this dialogue with a bunch of different options um, you can have it scale proportionally to the line, which we don't want. Um, we want it to stretch to fit stroke length. Um, the only thing you're gonna change here, there's a bunch of different options and you can play with those as you get more experience, but um, we wanna select tints and this way we can change the color of our stroke just as we would any other stroke. Um, and then we're gonna click okay. And now, if you want to grab your brush tool from the palette, you can see that your brush is selected here, and you can kind of play around with some different things. We can kind of draw a little angry man here. <laughs> just something fun. Uh, um, just to test it out. And that's, I mean, it looks like I drew this with charcoal that I used to to create these brushes so um, now that we've illustrated how to do one of those we can head back over to Photoshop and I'm gonna pick one of these shading pieces just to test this out inside we're gonna preview what this might look like and you can see that it definitely eliminates a lot of the detail in there. So we're gonna go back into Photoshop and we're gonna darken this up a bit before we bring it over. All right, now that we darken that piece a bit, we are going to preview what that looks like. You can see that we got a nice little shading element here. We're going to bring the paths down on this as well, though. Just because we don't want too much in there. All right, this is looking pretty good. We want to select ignore white. But also, we're going to use the arc on this as well so we we get the curve out of this element see here that's looking pretty straight all right we're good here so we can go to object expand appearance and then you see these little fragments out here. We're just gonna get rid of those with the, the selection tool, the direct selection tool. 
So you can just select those and hit delete. Same with this one here. And I think I'm going to get rid of some of these others that are trailing on either side. This element especially doesn't look like it quite fits. It's just a little dark for the rest of the for the rest of it. All right, now we're going to rotate this a bit. Check out if it lines up pretty well. Command eight, and we're going to drag this over to our brush palette, select art brush, same way as we did before, and then all of our settings are great except for tints, and now if you select your brush, you can see what that might look like when you're trying to shade some things. We have both of those brushes. Let's experiment with a scatter brush. So for this one, I'm just going to select the leaves and do an example using leaves here. I think I want to go with this one. I'll eventually input the ball, but just for the sake of showing you guys an example, I will grab this one and head back to Illustrator, paste it inside. And for this one, I want the brushes to, the or the leaves rather, to pretty much the bottoms of them to align horizontally. So it looks like that middle leaf is at like a 90 degree angle, which is kind of what we want if it were following a path. So I think this looks good. We're gonna go ahead and preview that, I think. For this one, it's looking a bit light when I trace it, so I'm going to bring the threshold up a little bit, give it a little bit more darkness, I'm going to take the paths down a little bit, see if that, that doesn't take away too much detail. So I think I'm good with that there. And we're going to ignore white. And then we're just going to expand. Okay. And then for this brush, once we drag it in here, we're going to make a scatter brush. Click OK. And we're just going to click OK for now. And then I am going to draw a path here so that we can see what this might look like. So as it is now, this is what our brush looks like. Let's experiment with this though. Double click back into your brush. Um, you can name your brush if you'd like. If you have a bunch of different brushes, it might help out. Um, gives you a close up view of what it looks like here. And for the size, I want this to randomize. You have a bunch of different settings here. If you have a Wacom tablet, you can use um, pressure, um, the tilt, uh, a couple different things, but for this we're going to choose random. And I want it to vary between 80% and 100%. So you can tell that gives us just a little bit of variance between the sizes. Um, the spacing, I am going to go to um, around 60 so they get a bit closer together. They're way too far apart right now um, Then for scatter We're also gonna randomize this and I want it to go 10% above the path and Negative 10% below the path If you have this vary too much, it starts looking a little little crazy um, you can also vary the spacing, but you might get some wide gaps. It just really depends on how you want to utilize this brush. Um, for rotation, I want these leaves to vary at a random rate between 
45. Let's see, yeah, 45 degrees and negative 45 degrees. So they kind of can go 45 degrees one way or 45 degrees the other. You can have them between 180 degrees and a negative 180 degrees, so they can they can randomize full 360. But um, for this case, I don't want them to vary too far from the path when I'm drawing trees. For instance, I don't want the the leaves to scatter too far, so. I'm just going to leave it set at 45. Um, you want to set your color method to tints, and then we are pretty much good with this brush. Yep, looks like everything checks out. I'm gonna click OK, and you want this to apply to strokes because I already have a stroke here, so I want it to apply to that stroke. And then if you select your brush tool, um, you can draw some more, see what that looks like, see if you're happy with it with different shapes. Um, I'm happy with this one. I'm mostly gonna be using it in small pieces. Um, oh, one thing, just drawing these now, I can see that I didn't select, is I want this brush, you can double click and always change this how this uh, brush behaves. I want the rotation to be relative to my path, not the page. So once you set that, it does make a little difference. And I'm gonna apply this to strokes. So you can see the path here, the rotation especially follows the, the eyebrows that I have on this little guy that I've drawn. And you can see that once you draw more, more paths, it will, react to that. Um, this really is going to make a difference for me because a lot of the paths on trees are going to be curving to edges like this and I don't want them aligning to the bottom of the page. Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, more to come. The next tutorial in this series is going to be color blocking. So we're going to go through, bring in our sketch that we did initially and block out the colors and get everything filled in and then we'll start adding some of these brushes and textures. Um, hope to see you again next time. If you haven't subscribed, please do so and give me a thumbs up button if you enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time.